Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Terry and I'll be starting VCU School of Medicine's upcoming July class of 2025. Uh, basically, the point of this video is to go over things that I did in my application process to get school fully funded for. I did graduate with a 3.5 GPA and had a 507 score on my second attempt in the MCAT. Um, and I obviously didn't have the strongest stats, as you know. However, I did get school fully funded for. So the purpose of this video is just to go over my application process and see exactly what I did to soak myself to the best of my abilities in order to do so. So let's get started. All right, so I think it's important to talk about my background. I was an individual who was pretty doubtful in the application process. In 2019, well, May of 2019, I graduated college. Didn't necessarily know exactly what I wanted to do. I mean, I had an idea that I wanted to be a physician, but I didn't have a lot of clinical hours and the whole process was kind of daunting. So I decided to take a year off and become a scribe. And what that did was it gave me a lot of clinical experience. I got to meet a lot of physicians, meet a lot of people at different parts of the healthcare field, and really just get acquainted with a lot of people who kind of guided me into knowing for sure that this is something that I wanted to do. Um, I did take my MCAT two times. The first time was in July of 2019. July of 2020, uh, got a 499, and then took it three weeks later after I got my score and got a 507. And so I really locked in and honed in. I was like, okay, well, this is the score I'm gonna apply with, and we'll just see how things go. And so for the rest of the video, I'll be going over my application process and just giving some tips um, as to how I was able to sell myself successfully to get into medical school and also stand out from the rest of the crowd. First things first is what you want to do is talk to somebody on the admissions board. This is this can be done at any step of the process. Um, the main reason I say this is because you need somebody to be brutally honest with you and talk to you in a manner that, to understand that you need to take certain steps from this from the starting point that you're at right now in order to be successful in your application process because if you just try to do it all on your own and think that you got it in the bag you'll not only waste time but you'll waste money um, and just resources in general when you could have been steered in the right direction in the first place so the work and activity sections along with the letters of recommendation and the personal statement is really the bulk of the application so this is where i'll be spending most of the time in the video so the work and activity section what you want to do is create and highlight your qualities and soft skills in a manner that shows that you're somebody who can build rapport with people easily, have great communication skills, a lot of basically just a lot of soft skills that will make a physician great, but don't just say it in black and white. Remember, there's hundreds upon thousands of kids applying to the same university or medical school that you're applying to, and so what you wanna do is show them that you're a person and make reading your application enjoyable so that they'll favor the application and pull it aside. You also want to have multiple individuals read it, but not too many. Uh, you want to have people who are on admissions boards, not only for medical school, but also in other areas, just so you can so they can get um, so you can get other perspectives on your paper, but not too many. Because if you receive too many too much criticism, then you'll be basically psyching and stressing yourself out on that critiquing and just taking wasting too much time trying to create the perfect section. Nobody has the perfect section. Just Realize that, and try to do your best, and move on from it. Lastly, I would say be a person. Get the stick out your butt, you know. When it came time to have, doing the MCAT and doing the courses and everything, you can be pretty pretentious. However, this is where you get to show who you are. And a lot of us have problems selling ourselves because it's kind of like, uh, like you're modest or you're humble and you don't really want to walk around and say, okay, this is what I've done, but this is the time to say that this is what you've done. So uh, just remember that you're a person and like I said, make everything in a storyline to make it easier for you and they make it easier to read uh, because that'll be helpful in the long run. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually go over one of my work and activity section. Uh, I'll just use my medical scribe one um, just so you can see how it looks to put into a story what qualities and skills that you've um, acquired or been able to exemplify in the process of gaining that experience. If I mess up while I'm reading, I'm gonna just popcorn shrimp on the yoga, not playing. Bye. So in an orthopedic clinic, I was responsible for recording the history of present illnesses, documenting examinations, and placing orders as dictated by the physician. Throughout my experience, I was able to build rapport with patients like Ms. J, who presented with a complaint of arthritis. During our initial visit, I held her hand and talked her through her first steroid injection in her knee. Months later, she returned and decided to proceed to surgery. During her first post-op follow-up, she brought brownies for curing her symptoms. It is this effect that I wanted to have as a physician. 
um, changing the lives of those who may not have the resources to change it for themselves. And so basically what that does is just outline multiple qualities. You can talk to people, you can build rapport with patients. Um, you want to be there for the patients physically and you're not just treating your experiences as a job, but more so as a learning experience. And so um, basically all of my stories were like that. I'll, I'll do one more uh, just as I was a server also. Um, just so you can see, you can just fast forward a few seconds if you don't really want to hear it, but this is one of mine. Live Crawfish and Seafood is a restaurant um, known for their delicious, authentic New Orleans-based seafood boil. On my first day of serving, I forgot to place an order in the kitchen and the table did not get their food nearly for 45 minutes. The customer tried to argue with the manager, but I stepped in and apologized for my first day nerves. After my apology, her food came out and she, was, she Miss Watkins, apologized for a hanger, her, her hanger. Uh, I really put that in there. Her hanger, and we laughed off the situation. To this day, Miss Watson visits Watkins visits the restaurant about twice a month, and we make jokes about how her favorite server started off as her worst. So basically, this shows a lot of different things. This wasn't one of my most meaningful experiences, but it basically just showed that a I can talk as a human being. B I can step up and take accountability for my actions. So accountability. I can, you know, maneuver the situation in a positive light and laugh it off with the customers. And also, B, I, you know, put the customers, or which translates later, to the patient first and not just try to do a job and then if I mess up, be like, no, it's not my fault. Um, so that really helped as far as like presenting my stories and statements and you just want to do things where it shows like accountability, compassion, um, good communication skills, all the general things, all the cliche things that, you know, people say, put those in stories. Don't just say, I am a hard worker. I was responsible for it, doing bam, 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 bam. And this is why I want to be a physician. No, put why you care about people, how you care about people, situations that you were put in to show that you are a caring individual. And so what I would suggest is write down a lot of soft skills and then choose a bunch of experiences that show exactly how you were able to display that um, in the face of adversity or just in any setting. All right, so letters of evaluation. This section will probably be a little bit short because it's more so on the other individual um, that you're getting the reference from. I would say one, choose the right people. Uh, in my experience, I had five recommendations, five or four recommendations of which were pretty strong. I got two from professors, two from um, just my mentor, and then another one was a research coordinator. And uh, you know, these were really important people in my life and we really got to connect pretty well. And then the last one was from my physician that I worked for as a scribe, or what was supposed to be. Um, however, he never turned in or submitted the reference even after my application was submitted. Uh, so, yeah, I just never saw that recommendation, and I kind of freaked out for a little bit at first, but I was like, I mean, if, if it's in my plans to get into medical school, then that wouldn't even matter, you know, so fortunately, I did get into medical school without it. I don't hold any shame against or any animosity towards of him, of course, because he's just a pretty, pretty busy guy, as most physicians are, so just make sure you're telling these physicians, especially if you're using them as resources or anybody in general for that matter, early or like weeks in advance, because, um, I mean, you may even have to write the letter of recommendation <laughs> yourself, but um, just make sure they know how to maneuver through the a M at the MCAS site just so they can submit it on time and both parties would uh, avoid a significant amount of stress in the long run. All right, so the next session after that, I think, is medical schools or choosing which medical schools you want to apply for. Um, keep in mind that the application is pretty expensive. Uh, and the more schools you add on, the more fees that you have to pay. Also, you get... Um, you have to answer a lot of questions for these applications. So, I mean, if you got the money like that and you got the time like that and you wanna have extra cushion, you can have some extra cushion, but my pockets won't all swole, so I did apply. I only applied to like four medical schools. Um, and then the way it works is your primary application is, MCAS is kind of like the college board, so you just get the overall general consensus of who you are and selling the, like the, I guess the uh, superficial version of who you are. And then the secondaries kind of go into the nitty gritty of what can you do for our school? How, why will you be a good additive? But they feel like tertiaries because like really you already answered all these questions. So it's kind of like, just let me in the school. Take my money. Like this is a whole application for me and you. I'm charging hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like, yeah, just take my money, you know? But anyway, that's, that's, that's beside the point. Just make sure that you're pretty conscientious about which schools you're applying to. Uh, and yeah. All right, so personal statement. This is like 
the shaboing boing. Um, and it's pretty hard to write a personal statement. What's well, not really hard is just also tedious because you already wrote the work and activity section and you presented them as paragraphs. So you would think that, you know, that's what they would use when it comes to judging your character, your sense of character. And so, uh, you know, basically I'll go over an outline of exactly how I kind of framed my personal statement to make it a little bit easier when it comes to writing. All right, so first I outlined who I was and what sparked my interest in medicine. Um, my personal story was my mom was a nurse, my dad, um, he was always like, you know, reinforcing discipline and everything. And so uh, my mom being a nurse sparked my interest, but I also got to talk about, you know, who I was in kind of middle school and um, going to school and being all like cool because I was talking in medical terms. But I mean, honestly, I didn't even really care when I was in medical school. I, just, I mean, in middle school, you know, it was just something that kind of sparked my interest. And then as I matriculated to high school, I matriculated throughout the um, personal statement, I got to talk about how research and uh, working in the medical field kind of sparked my interest. As I stated earlier, I didn't necessarily have the most clinical hours. I did have two research opportunities and I really didn't get clinical hours, hardcore, like documented clinical hours until after I graduated. Um, so that was something that had me pretty nervous. However, it was like, it is what it is. Um, but I did have like a, a year worth of scrubbing. So that definitely helped out and build a, helped build a foundation for what I wanted to base my you know job on. And so um, when it came to that or selling myself in that manner for the research and experience, how that kind of molded my decision in choosing medical school, I was able to really talk in a way that showed a streamline of events of, okay, well, I'm working here, I'm working here, I'm volunteering here for experience, but not just for documented experience. I really got to learn and show off, showcase different talents, um, but also talk about like humility about how I ain't know nothing when I started. So um, yeah. All right, and then towards the end of my personal statement, I explained specifically why I wanted to be a physician. Keep in mind for the personal statement and also for your uh, interviews, is that for the reason that you want to go into medicine or the reason you want to be a physician, more than likely every chain of the healthcare field addresses that niche or like that urge. But you want to talk about specifically why you want to be a physician, you know, because Nine times out of ten, like, you know, you say you want to be with patients and you want to do such and such and such. But if you think about it, the nurses are the ones that with the patients more. You want to be the first line of response. Actually, it's more like the EMTs or the nurses, etc. So just make sure you're outlining the specific autonomies that come with being a physician and why you would be a perfect candidate or why you would be able to put um, yourself in a situation to make a difference as the physician specifically. And just make sure you outline that. Um, as opposed to just saying, I want to help people or I want to um, save lives or I want to change lives, you know, because the cliche responses are going to be on hundreds of applications. So make sure that you stand out and make it do what it do. Yeah, so basically that was my application process. I'll be probably uploading other videos. If you do want more information um, or you want to know about my application, I still have everything in a Google document and I'm not stingy or anything. Like I'll send you guys, um, you know, prompts or responses or anything. If you need any help, just let me know. You can follow me on Instagram at Terry underscore the twin. I am a twin. You know what it is. Shout out to Terrence. You know what I mean? But um, also you can like and subscribe to this video and more content will be coming out. If you do want to, you know, get your groove on while you're studying, I also, me and my brother also make uh, videos, rap videos to remember the curriculum. And so check out all the videos that we have. If you want any motivation, we also do that. A whole plethora of things on our YouTube channel for Be The Movement. So check us out and good luck on medical school, guys. So we're in this together and I hope to see you soon.